On the one hand, uh, Poland is a country of a big success. Uh, a few months ago, the Economist wrote some uh, article about New Jagiellonian uh, era, New Jagiellonian times, um, connected to, to the 16th, 17th century. Uh, and the truth is that uh, Poland is a country of a fast change, that uh, Poland uh, is the only European economy which uh, avoid the late uh, 2000s uh, recession. Uh, we have, in fact, uh, 24 years of growing of our GDP. Sometimes it's only 1, 2 or 3 percent, but sometimes it used to be 6 or 7 percent. Uh, GDP growth uh, per year. Nowadays, Poland is about six or seven economy in the European Union and about 20 or 21 uh, economy in the, in the world. So this is on the one hand. But on the other hand, Poland has the biggest immigration in Polish history, about two and a half or three million immigrants, especially young people. More than 75% of uh, A-level pupils and declare strong will to leave Poland uh, last year. Last year we had also the highest level of people who committed suicide uh, after 1989, about 6,000 uh, people. Uh, there is a very low social capital, low trust in political and public institutions. Um, Poland is a bureaucratic or over-bureaucratic country with many regulations, too many regulations. Many people, in my opinion, emigrate not only because of uh, better money, but because of clear rules for business, uh, for example, in England. In fact, um, uh, I'm quite often in England because um, I'm a director of uh, Polish Research Center of the Agrarian University in London, so in fact, I met many Poles uh, there, and most of them, in my opinion, um, are fed up, um, um, are disappointed about uh, too, many, too many regulations, too complicated uh, uh, law system. Uh, during the last uh, eight years, Civic Platform had many scandals, and what was uh, even sometimes worse, didn't care about many promises. For example, they promised uh, to reduce taxes, uh, but they rise uh, the taxes. Probably the worst scandal uh, for the civic platform was, was connected to tapes. Many ministers uh, of the government were recorded in restaurants talking uh, in not very nice way, not about Poland, uh, not about common good, not about something uh, which is uh, connected to politics in this uh, ethic uh, way, um, but uh, about, um, about um, uh, their own interest uh, and paying very high bills um, using uh, public money. So it was probably the most important scandal uh, connected to the result of uh, last, last uh, election, uh, in, my, in my opinion. Ladies and gentlemen, in my opinion, more and more polls uh, noticed that many institutions, law, need reforms, that politics can be more moral, more oriented toward uh, common good. Uh, I'm just thinking that heritage matter and polls uh, recognize that um, uh, politics should be more, let's say, republican, more ethical, because Poles are very interested in politics. They complain very often, but we have a lot of um, programs in television, in commercial television, in radios connected to, to politics. And Poles discuss about politics almost everywhere. Uh, so in my opinion, there is on the one hand. On the other hand, there is a very low participation in election. There is a, a very low trust in, in political institutions, as I, as I mentioned. So, I think that um, Poles discovered some Republican traditions and knew that uh, without uh, free citizens' activity, change is impossible. So, uh, in fact, in every democracy, real change and political change is necessary 
from time to time. And uh, we'll see if new government uh, make any positive changes. Uh, if not, of course, Poles will be once again disappointed uh, so much. Thank you. And uh, now I will pass the, the mic to, to uh, Professor Artur Wołek, who will tell us about the election. Obviously, we know what, what is the context of this meeting, uh, I mean, but it, it should be spelled out. Uh, I mean, the one-sided uh, coverage uh, by the international media of the Polish elections and the basic message from the media that a radical right took over uh, and probably there is another you know, ill man of Europe uh, this time. Uh, somewhere on Vistula. So this is not the train we, we've came with, uh, but it's, uh, it's a symbolic, uh, uh, what you probably call this Budapest Warsaw Express. Uh, uh, and th this is the message that comes from the international media. And this is well, very well received in, in Poland, in fact, that we really want to have uh, the a uh, sort of uh, Hungarian exercise uh, in, uh, in Poland now, uh, because the, uh, by, by the, 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 the right-wing uh, uh, politicians perceive uh, Orban government as, uh, uh, as a government that is courageous, uh, uh, doesn't kowtow to Brussels, and has some uh, interesting ideas in the economic uh, uh, sphere and uh, knows how to cope with the opposition. Uh, last week I was uh, on, a, on a discussion uh, uh, with, uh, well, quite famous people on both sides of the uh, of the political of the political stage, and the division wasn't pro-law and justice, anti-law and justice. Uh, it was more those who do believe that the, the government may change something and they will be radical and there will be a kind of revolution or, I don't know, uh, radical evolution Hungarian way and those who would say, uh, no, nothing will happen. Uh, and this was based on the uh, 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 on the analysis of what really happened. So the, the, the basic message probably is uh, that what, what happened was a sort of revolution because for the first time in, in the Polish history, uh, the, uh, the results of the uh, election returned uh, uh, an absolute majority uh, for one party. And uh, this is, I would say, exceptionally untypical. In, in, it's, in fact, the f for the first time in the Polish history, including interwar period, including even Austro-Hungarian Empire, when uh, in the democratic elections the, the, the Polish representation was always divided. Uh, so, uh, yes, that's something, something new, which may give a... Uh, 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 may suggest that the, the new government will uh, have first the legitimacy and then uh, the courage to, to change the, uh, uh, the basic institutions of, of, uh, of the republic. And they will have a mandate as well. Uh, and the next, uh, uh, the next uh, 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 untypical feature of these elections is that uh, actually, the opposition is quite weak. I mean, the civic platform is uh, uh, strong in terms of the, uh, uh, the, the, the number of the caucus, uh, but parliamentary party, but uh, they are divided. They don't have strong leadership uh, and are sort of demoralized because during these all eight, long eight years uh, uh, of power, they really converted into a sort of power party uh, without major ideas uh, what politics about. So they, they have to reinvent themselves and it will take time, obviously. 
the other uh, governing party up till now, the uh, People's Party or Peasant Party, if you will, uh, they, they barely passed the threshold. There is this uh, uh, big uh, parliamentary party called Cookies 15. It's not about cookies, it's the name of a rock singer uh, who ran in the, uh, in the presidential elections with uh, uh, the, the third uh, uh, result and then set up his uh, list in the parliamentary elections. Uh, and they, they, they are, they, this is a, a mixture of uh, uh, right libertarian, uh, extreme nationalist, and uh, left libertarian, and uh, uh, whatever. Uh, uh, I wouldn't say politicians, activists. So uh, it's definitely not a, a danger for, for, the, for the governing party. Okay, so the, the, these are the uh, 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 these two features suggest that uh, there might be a revolution. Okay, meaning that the governing party has a strong majority, the opposition is weak, uh, and the uh, uh, the uh, mandate is really strong for the law and justice. But if you uh, if you look at the uh, detailed results of, of the last elections, so the civic platform lost, not because the voters switched, their voters switched to uh, law and justice, but they switched to a new liberal party. And uh, actually, two-thirds of, uh, of the voters of the civic platform I would say stayed with the, uh, uh, the same political camp. Uh, they are still within the reach of, uh, of the uh, liberal appeal, I would say. Uh, which means that there is no major social base for a revolution. Okay? It's just a swing uh, between the governing party and the opposition party, not a major change from more liberal views of uh, the previous elections uh, to more conservative or radical right-wing views of the uh, uh, present elections. And uh, uh, law and justice won only uh, the uh, law and justice won the absolute majority only thanks to a coalition with two smaller right-wing parties. The, these parties are not important up till now. I mean, they, they've got like uh, uh, two cabinet ministers uh, in the new government and like three to five junior ministers. Uh, but they have a potential for growing, for attracting uh, 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 some castaways from uh, from the civic platform, from this cookies movement. Uh, so uh, obviously, the, the, they they might end up like Hungarian Christian Democrats, uh, but uh, there is also strong possibility uh, that they. Uh, they will have a major influence on the uh, on the new uh, government. Okay, so uh, you can either believe that uh, that this new mandate will prevail, and the uh, uh, this reservation I'm, uh, I'm uh, recalling uh, will uh, be not that important. Uh, and the new government will be courageous and radical. Uh, but there are good reasons to think that uh, law and justice politicians realize that there is no potential for, for really radical change, uh, that the voters uh, wanted a change in politics, but not a radical change, and that they will follow this, uh, uh, this path. So we, we've had uh, we have had 
the uh, government sworn in uh, on the 16th of uh, November, I guess. So it's like seven days. And this was uh, quite stormy seven days, I would say. Uh, so what, what's, what's happening now? I mean, this works against my, uh, my argument uh, 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 I, I've just given. Uh, but I think not exactly against. So first, uh, it turned out that even the voters voted for, uh, for sort of mild face of uh, the law and justice, which was impersonated by uh, Prime Minister candidate uh, Shudwa. Uh, the, the major agent behind the government is definitely the leader of the party. Uh, and the prime minister uh, is on a short leash. That's, that's definitely uh, 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 not ever a uh, uh, <laughs> government. It, it's much more the government by uh, by Yaroslav Kaczynski, even though he, he, he is, not a, is not a member. I mean, uh, uh, there are quite many ministers who have really close relations to the leader of the party and not to the prime minister, and there are only two people who can be associated with, uh, with, the, with the prime minister. Uh, does it matter? Does it really matter? Uh, perhaps yes, perhaps not, but if uh, Jaroslav Kaczynski is perceived as radical and he sends his people to the government, it may suggest that the government will be more radical than, uh, than not. Uh, and these first six days uh, in the shadow of, uh, of Paris uh, were probably uh, uh, as stormy as, as in, in the international uh, on the international stage. I mean, uh, first, uh, the secret services were changed during, were changed overnight. I mean, uh, uh, literally overnight. The procedure takes uh, uh, a consultation with the parliament uh, and the consultation took place in 10 p.m., I guess. And in the morning, the, the old uh, 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 commanders of the secret <coughs> services were delivered uh, 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 the, the, the letters uh, 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 sacking them. Uh, so I would call it provocative change, okay? Because it, from from a sort of uh, uh, instrumental point of view, it could take uh, two days and it wouldn't change anything. Uh, but for a reason. Uh, the new government wanted to show a strong fist to, to the secret services community, but also probably to the broader public opinion. Uh, and within five days, the, uh, the law on the constitutional court was changed. And again, it was the civic platform who, who changed the law first, and they nominated their own judges. So uh, the pendulum uh, swing uh, to the right, and the Law and Justice uh, Party decided to nominate their own uh, 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 judges uh, by changing the, uh, the law. Uh, so this was perceived as a radical uh, uh, attack on the foundations of the Republic. Okay? Uh, unlike the uh, uh, other uh, uh, civic platforms uh, uh, attack on the foundations of the Republic. Uh, and then there, there came the expose, the programmatic speech by uh, Prime Minister uh, Shidwa. And what is most important, it was extremely focused on the electoral campaign promises. Okay, so she said she would deliver. She would, uh, so the, the main message of the campaign was, uh, uh, yes, we can. Uh, and uh, it was like a, 
uh, next step in, in, this, uh, in this narrative that, yes, we can. And what, what we can? We can uh, 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 grant child benefit to every, uh, for every second uh, child in the family and third and fourth, obviously, as well. Uh, uh, higher minimum wage, universal tax credit at the level of, say, Spain or Portugal, probably, uh, and protection of, of the arable, uh, arable land. Uh, so these are all, all sort of social promises, uh, and the, the new government stresses that they, they want to keep these these promises. But on the other hand, uh, the, there was almost nothing about the uh, uh, foreign policy. Uh, so she started with uh, security, because this was just after Paris, uh, and then she switched to uh, child benefits, minimum wage, uh, universal tax credit. Uh, so. Um, Probably the message, the, the, the message was that this will be a, a, a sort of uh, populist government in this very democratic sense of the word populist, that if we promise something to you, we will do uh, this, whatever would happen. Okay, so you may think this is radical and dangerous, and perhaps it may be, but on the other hand, uh, uh, if, you, if you look who is in charge of money in this government, this is a, a, a commercial banker and uh, 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 the president of a, think, of, of a sort of right libertarian think tank. So uh, I don't know how, to, uh, uh, how, how they, they, they would uh, uh, cope with these promises, but uh, the message is, uh, uh, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Uh, so probably the, uh, uh, I might conclude here that uh, uh, we really don't know what would happen. Uh, because on the one hand, there are some suggestions that this will be radical, like these seven days with two major clashes with uh, uh, lawyers and liberal public opinion and these populist uh, strains in the, uh, in the expose. On the other hand, there is a lot of uh, 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 features saying uh, uh, there is an anti-radical potential in this, uh, in this government uh, as well. And, uh, but this is not the end of the presentation because I, I wanted to, 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 to say something what, what will happen. <laughs> I don't know what will happen and it, that's probably a common feature of all political scientists that they are good at the analysis of uh, what was happening three years ago but what will happen, who knows. Uh, but Jerry asked me to, to say a few words about the foreign policy because you might be interested uh, in foreign policy. Uh, and I don't know much to say about this. I mean, what would happen uh, with foreign policy of, of the new government? Because uh, foreign policy took exactly uh, 90 seconds in the uh, expose uh, of uh, Prime Minister uh, Shidwa. Uh, which uh, probably indicates that it will be on the margins uh, of the agenda of the new government and it will be subjugated to, to sort of internal electoral uh, policy uh, or politics. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there is a major problem with, uh, with foreign policy in, in this government. Or, a possible major problem with, uh, with foreign policy in this government, meaning that the, the, there will be two or even three uh, decision centers. Uh, uh, because uh, last month, after the election of uh, President Duda, showed that Duda wants to have a say in, in, in uh, 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 foreign policy. Uh, 
as you may know, Polish constitution is quite different from Hungarian and the president is not only elected in general elections, but also constitutionally is empowered to influence uh, um, foreign policy. The previous uh, uh, president Komorowski wasn't eager to, uh, to, to have his own uh, foreign policy. Um, president Kwasniewski, whom you may remember, uh, was the person to, to, to have his own foreign policy. And it looks like the, the, the new president is somebody interested in, uh, in foreign policy or uh, has a chief foreign policy advisor who, uh, I don't know, I, I, I wanted to say who is ambitious and, and who, which politician isn't ambitious, so it's, it's stupid. Uh, but who has a strong, uh, strong influence over uh, president and uh, probably uh, will try to, to, to influence uh, foreign policy. Okay, uh, the, new, uh, the new foreign minister is uh, a seasoned diplomat, I would say. Uh, he was deputy foreign minister uh, uh, in 2005, 2006-2007. Uh, uh, and uh, what we can definitely say about him is that he's an, obviously he wanted to say it, this won't be uh, Brussels and this won't be uh, Berlin, uh, but it indicates somehow the mindset of, of, uh, of this team, uh, that we should, we Poles should, try to reorient our foreign policy from the direct line to Berlin and close cooperation to Berlin, uh, which is perceived now as bankrupt, basically, uh, towards more regional cooperation. And the region is, uh, is perceived as something really broad from Baltic Sea area to, to probably uh, 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 Balkans or... Uh, as, as you may know, President Duda um, paid uh, state visit to, to Bucharest and he was very well received. Uh, he has a sort of friendly relations, uh, established a sort of friendly relations with uh, Slovak, uh, with the Slovak president. Uh, I guess, yeah, paying a visit to Bucharest is not the, the uh, the most attractive uh, advertisement in Budapest for, for this new government. Uh, but uh, obviously, Bucharest is not perceived as a, as a sort of counterweight to, to, to Budapest. It's, it's not the case. Simply, uh, Bucharest was uh, probably, they, they were more eager to, to receive uh, do the uh, at this uh, highest uh, possible diplomatic level. If you would ask me today, uh, what's the, what's what's the bet for Kulturkampf or non-radical uh, evolution of Polish uh, uh, political stage? I would say 50-50. Okay, the last week was really horrible uh, on both sides. I mean. Uh, these radical uh, moves were received as it, they might be received, meaning with this sort of radical statements that no cooperation with new government. Okay, no, no co cooperation with new government, with the new government, and uh, uh, whatever they do, it's wrong. Okay, or whatever they would do, it uh, will be wrong. Uh, and on the other hand, a sort of uh, anti-elite enthusiasm among uh, part of the uh, uh, pro-government uh, media. Uh, so, yes, there is a possibility of Hungarian scenario in, in Poland as well, uh, meaning this. We, are, we have already have the Democratic Charter, 
Uh, it's called uh, the Committee for the Defense of Democracy. It started as a, as a Facebook page, but it's now supported by the elites. Uh, so yes, there is a potential for, 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 for a major clash uh, in, in Poland uh, too. Uh, but I, I think that what is probably most important is uh, the strategy of Jarosław Kaczyński, the leader of law and justice. We really don't know what his strategy is, uh, but can, it can be both. I mean, uh, he knows that the culture camp sell, sells well uh, to a certain degree, like 30% of the electorate of law and justice uh, is uh, strongly anti-elitist, but you, you don't win the elections with, with the 40%, you don't get the absolute majority with, with 30%. You do need those center-right voters who swing from, uh, from liberal camp to, uh, to, to the right-wing camp. Uh, so he can either opt for, for this sort of cultural camp or, or just the opposite uh, after this uh, stormy week, he, he can opt for uh, uh, something uh, uh, less uh, attractive for, for these core voters and something more attractive for, for the swing voters who, uh, who will be convinced by the uh, social uh, benefits, so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, I don't know what will happen, 50-50. Uh, Budapest is still possible on, on uh, Vistula. Uh, the express from Budapest to Warsaw is probably now somewhere in between the two towns. In Poland, Russia is not about politics, it's much more about culture and really deeply rooted distrust, well, to put it mildly, distrust towards uh, Russia. So it's not about uh, political strategy, Ukraine, whatever. It's basically what, uh, what Polish pupils at the age of seven learn somehow. Uh, I'm, I'm really surprised, me as a father of three, uh, I'm, I'm really surprised that one day they, they become anti-Russian. I mean, Personally, nothing against Russian, but one day they come from kindergarten and they start saying something about Russians. So uh, I don't know how it works, this socialization, uh, but it's really deeply rooted. Suicide for a politician. We, we don't have a single politician saying uh, that Poland should cooperate with Russia. Uh, that it might be advisable to uh, think econom in terms of the economy and we should probably uh, uh, think about Russian markets. Okay, Polish Peasant Party has these sorts of overtones because the they electorate are, are, are people who, uh, who lost uh, the, their market, but, but it, it wasn't even outspoken, it more like, you know, so no way. <laughs> it was really hardly acceptable for Poles to, to deal with Putin uh, the, the, the way Orban did, uh, but uh, I think that there is a possibility for, for, for a new beginning if Orban follows this sober line and, uh, and the, the analysis of, of Brussels uh, is uh, extremely Orban-esque among Polish politicians. So, so actually the, it was Orban who, who, who gave them the language of describing the destruction or self-destruction of the Euro European Union. So, um, so I wouldn't say the United States will be the problem. The, uh, Russia, Russia is now the problem, but thanks to, uh, thanks to Orban's European policy, it may be overcame. One of the most controversial issues in, in Europe as a whole has to do with migrants and immigration. 
Is Polish resistance to the idea of quotas going to be still firmer as a result of the change of government? Will there be any perceivable difference? Yes, thank you for this question. It is a big issue. It used to be a big issue during the um, uh, campaign. Um, so, Polish government uh, agreed for 7,000 uh, immigrants uh, till now, but uh, we are not sure if uh, if new government will will do it. Uh, the problem is uh, that uh, this this government, uh, um, I mean, uh, Minister Konrad Szymański, this future European uh, minister, minister of of Europe, European Union. Um, said officially that uh, that uh, Polish government um, n will not agree for this, even for the seven thousand. Um, so, th so the situation is, is so. So this government understands the the Orban and the Hungary politics against uh, immigrants. So, so this is much much more uh, complicated uh, question. But uh, I would like to add one one more thing. Uh, of course, po Polish politics is mm, against uh, Putin and our imperialistic uh, politics, but not against Russian. And uh, in Poland, Russian culture is very popular, so it's it's more complicated, let's say. So Russian politics, especially after Georgia and after uh, aggression in Ukraine, is, is uh, recognized as something wrong and something danger for, for Central Europe. But uh, not necessarily Russians uh, as a citizens, Russians as a, as a, as a um, as a people. So, so that's it.